Hello everybody and welcome to Art Friends, where we are friends who like art. My name is Coda, and I am joined by my friend, Singular. 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 It's, it's singularity. We have reached the singularity, everyone. Today we're talking about uh, robots taking over every single one of our jobs, including art. No. Yes. That would be a good topic, but not today. So, actually, on that, I feel like art is one of the safest jobs from robots taking over. Really? Yeah. But why? Because it's just art. Like art is one of those because things. Because it's so subjective. It's so subjective that it's very hard for a ro like a mi robot can make code because it's very objective what works and what doesn't. But yeah. it's very hard for a robot to make art because it just it it appeals to humans and humans only. You know. Only humans. Only humans. <laughs> It still makes me sad that, like, cats and dogs don't appreciate art. Or, like, yeah. they can't appreciate art. Or music. Some birds can appreciate music, though. Birds Fantastic. create the music. That's true. Whales do, too. I want to just see a rave concert with, wh with whales. Anyhow, today just, it's just Coda and me. Cohen, it is. Because of some stinky German people. But well, we won't get into that. Yeah, Apollo is a bit busy at the moment. Yeah. But... We're stinky German people. <laughs> stinky indeed. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, let's... Let's get into what we're what... doing. <laughs> you turned into a YouTube Let's Player. And... Let's get like... into it, guys. <laughs> guys, I did some mining off camera. No. <laughs> guys, I did some mining off camera. I got an entire inventory of diamonds. Yeah. Definitely didn't spawn these in. No. But, uh, whatchamacallit. Every time you say that, I still think of the Taste You Like Yogurt song. Of the what? Don't ask. What are you talking about? You never heard it? No. Then I shouldn't have made that reference. Crap. The what? <laughs> oh, so... <laughs> oh... It's it's a song from Camp Camp. I'll let I'll let you listen to it after the podcast. Okay. It's a it's a song by a band called Whatchamacallit. And every time you say Whatchamacallit, I think of that song immediately. Uh, is it one of the outro songs? Yeah. Okay. I did, I've only listened to like a Bard's Tale. Yeah, but it's like it also it's featured in the episode on Prager. That's not the topic of this episode. Coda, what are we doing? Okay, well, when it's me and Cohen, we usually do a little thing where we build a world. Yeah, it's time to get back or craft and benches. It's, it's time to get crafting. We're gonna do some. We're gonna do some building off camera real quick and come back with a world real for quick. you guys. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back, guys. We developed an entire storyline real quick <laughs> off camera. All right, guys. We just went ahead and wrote a novel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> buy it now. It's on Amazon. <laughs> the rest of this podcast episode is an advertisement. You're welcome. But yeah, we, whenever it's just me and Cohen, we usually build a world together. Uh, yeah. And how this works is we have about a rough time limit of when Cohen has to leave, which is around an hour. So yeah, the first part of this, we're going to start spitballing ideas at each other. And then for the second half, we're going to refine one of those ideas. We're going to pick one we like and make it into a more refined world. Last yeah. time we did a spooky world. Yeah, we did. Which I, th I think was very fun. It was fun. I, I like that world a lot. I still adore the idea of the plant world just because I like the military aesthetic mixed with the plants. Plant. Plant. Eat pants. What? <laughs> but, yeah. So, Cohen. Cohen, do you have any ideas for a world? Because I'm a bit at a loss right now. So, I wait, we're, we're, we're spitballing? We're spitballing. We're spitballing. We're spitballing. <laughs> 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 Cohen, stop, that's not nice. Too many. I, I can't sort through all... Okay, it's in my eyes. Cohen. Cohen. Cohen, that's not even the sound spitballs make, that's just spitting. <laughs> I don't remember what the spitball is. Uh... <laughs> A spitball is whenever you take, from what I can gather, the wrapper of the straw, and you... 
put it inside inside your mouth to get it covered in saliva and put that inside the straw and then blow it like a blow dart. That's disgusting. <laughs> I was thinking of just spitting so much it would turn into an orb. No. That's even more disgusting now that I think of it. So, yeah, it is. But, like, the term spitballing comes from whenever you spitball, you... It, they stick to the wall usually and you just spitball ideas at the wall and see which ones stick yeah so alternative Cohen. term is uh throwing potato mush at the ceiling yes throwing pasta to see if it's fully cooked that also works but honestly i think we should send pasta to the moon instead pasta does need to go to the moon that could be our world italian moon italian moon <laughs> do we know enough about Italy to create an Italian moon? Probably not. I don't. That could actually be pretty. What? How about like an interstellar pizza delivery surface uh, station on the moon? Okay. Huh. Like, hear me out. This is a distant, a fairly distant sci-fi world. We finally broadcast, and I watched the Alien Worlds documentary recently. But we finally decided to like broadcast and join the universal club of like aliens and shit and um aliens really freaking liked our pizza so now uh one of the biggest incomes we have is a single uh fairly small actually uh pizza store on the moon that like delivers uh that delivers pizza across the galaxy at lightning speeds and has like its little uh pizza hut on the moon Moon Hut. Huh. Pizza Moon. Moon Pizza. Pizza Rover. Pizza Rover. <laughs> pizza Rover. Yeah, that's that's fun. I like the idea of humans kind of casually interacting with aliens. Yeah. It's like, we still live on Earth, we don't live among the stars, but at the same time, our technology advanced enough to where we've, like, found life, and we just go chill with them. Yeah, and we give them pizza. Yeah. Hmm. That could be a fun, like, idea for a show. It will probably be a fairly whimsical show. Maybe even it a would be. Show. And the thing is, in this world, it it's not really a defined world. It's more like a concept. Yeah. Because there's probably unlimited amounts of aliens that we could design, which would also be really fun. That would be fun. Tons of different aliens. So many aliens. So many aliens. I watched the first episode of Alien Worlds, and it was very cool. Yeah, you have no idea how many grabs I have with Alien Designs, Coda. Really? What, what did you have ones with the ones in Alien Worlds? Mm, no, I don't think so. Those were pretty good. Don't, those were fantastic. But I do have some grabs sometimes with Aliens. But that has to do with other stuff. I won't get into that today. Yeah. Um, let's see. So do you, do you like that concept at all? Just like Pizza Moon? I think it's fun. It is, it is like I said, a concept and not a world. But like, I feel we like... We can make it into a yeah, world. Yeah, we could make it into a world. All right, before we get too attached, do you have any other concepts? Um, it's basically Africa, but instead of the modern day animals, it's a whole bunch of... Uh, it's a mishmash between the dinosaurs and like prehistoric mammals that look really freaking cool and it's basically Dinotopia but like tribal and it takes place in Africa Africa is so cool except it it except like there's these huge structures and huge cities uh, but they never advanced past like a tribal lifestyle so they're like gigantic tribal cities yeah Africa is so cool I've really been looking into like African clothing recently because I'm just fascinated yeah. by it like, I feel like Africa is, like, one of those places that just, like, takes so much pride in their clothing, and you can really see it. Yeah, they have color. They do, and, like, it's actually really interesting to look at. Instead of my eyes burn. <laughs> but imagine that clothing style, Coda. On, like, prehistoric mammals and dinosaurs. That uh -huh. make no sense whatsoever, like, prehistorically, but they, may, they look cool. Right. Okay, that could be fun. What Some about kind of we, like we, we pre take... prehistoric fantasy tribal? I, I was about okay. to say 
tribal fantasy could be fun. But, like, instead of something, uh, very rooted in reality, what if we, like, went, like, a totally different direction? Like, here's a good example. Uh, an old world that I built was heavily inspired by, like, I was like, okay, what about, like, the four elements? And then I built four sections of a island based off the four elements, and then I... And because of that, it didn't really resemble much that it had been in reality. Yeah. So, what? what's... You just made Avatar. I did. I, I actually ended up stopping on that project because it turned out to be a worse Avatar. But... <laughs> that... It was so strange how many similarities it had to Avatar before I had ever even watched Avatar. What What's something fun that we could base, like, a fantasy world on? Like, the elements. Whatchamacallit. Tastes you like yogurt. Something completely based off dairy? Dairy. No. <laughs> I don't like dairy. It's really bad for the environment. Well, babies, you heard it here first. No more milk for you. No more milk. Not allowed. Your baby goes to drink and you just smack it and you're like, that's not ego-friendly. Go drink like soda. Soda babies. Yeah. Soda babies. Oh, what if the world didn't have a center like Earth or whatever? Like, which, like we have. Like where everything's connected. Instead, it was just a ton of smaller chunks of island or whatever spread out over a long distance like a uh, prehistoric no that's not prehistoric prehistoric the prehistory i'm thinking of they at least they had one big supercontinent and that's like the opposite of what we want yeah but like no water like it's all sky in between honestly that would be very diff that would skylanders uh... <laughs> oh yeah i do like skylanders though so. I feel like we could take Skylanders and make something different out of it. Welcome to... Um, Land Skyers. Aviation Grounders. Aviation Grounders Goliaths. Yes. Aviation Grounders um, <laughs> Trickery. Trickery Squad. <laughs> Capture Friends. <laughs> that's the one same one I was that's the same one I was parodying um exchange team this one features King Kong and Godzilla <laughs> nice anyhow on topic you know because we like to do that yes but I, I, I love the way air transportation looks like you know, very, like, technical, yeah. steam We could combine these together. We could do uh, steampunk, tribal, African, dinosaur, islands, question mark. Ste okay. Yeah, I just, I just love the way air transportation looks so much. I need to design more, like, hot air balloons and stuff. Do you mean hot air balloons or do you mean sexy air balloons? <clears throat> Both. <laughs> <laughs> just instead of the balloon part, it's just a giant testicle. I mean, chesticle. <laughs> just one testicle. <laughs> a single one. <laughs> my, my. Your, your, your balloon's got an interesting shape. Yeah, I, I, I uh, killed a giant at some point. Came in real yep. handy. We call her old one baller. <laughs> uh, her. <laughs> her. Oh, that refers back to that joke we cut out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain that one. Nope. Anyhow. Nope. We shouldn't. But do you like that idea, or should we continue spitballing? We should spitball a little bit more, and Cause we can I always... Have, How long I do you have? I have infinity ideas. Alright, give me one of them. Uh, basically, it's like... Uh, this might be food-related or not, but it's basically some kind of uh, small-town shack. 
uh, where all sorts of supernatural stuff just happens. And at some point, one of the people who live close to the shack notices and they, and or like the owner of the shack uh, buys the shack and then da, he turns into like a da, supernatural da, ghost hunter. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 oh yeah, da, da. you're right. Dang it! <laughs> I was thinking of more like a a fifties, like a nineteen fifties, like uh, supernatural story. Yeah, like ghosts, aliens, vampires. He catches them all. Yeah, that's really interesting. Just like that a was, like, supernatural hunter. I was also kind of influenced by that one game where you like capture zombies and like turn them into smoothies and sell them to the populace. Uh huh. That's a fun game. Yeah. It's a mobile game. So don't remember what it's called. This this is Anyhow. like a a world where supernatural stuff exists, and this one guy knows about it and deals with it. Yeah, or maybe it's a team. I don't know. Okay. That could be but fun. But I think that could be fun. Just like, I don't know, something like Evil Dead influenced even, where it's just one guy, maybe with a team sometimes, yeah. taking on supernatural stuff. That could be fun. It could be like a MacGyver story where you see him build all these clever contraptions to, like, uh, deal with these supernatural threats. Mm-hmm. And the more the show goes on, the more you see him having mind off camera. And like on, in episode one, it's literally just a barren shack with a bunch of like voodoo stuff and like old, old stuff inside. It could even be like an abandoned restaurant. That could be cool. But at the end of the show, he's just like, he just straight up uh, built it into like, like a lab or whatever, like a full on, full on house, full on operative headquarters something like that that yeah. could also be fun you know I, I can see that being really interesting that's like a show idea yeah I came up with two like vaguely food related show ideas so far I'll, I'll, <laughs> and, and African tribes dinosaurs um, <laughs> but I, I, have, I, have a, I have a whole bunch of other ideas if you want to yeah I have some as well Tell me one of them. Tell you one of them. Okay. Uh, I really love the look and the feel of Dante's Inferno. Oh yeah, that could be cool. So like, I haven't, I haven't like read or experienced it much, but from what so I know, about it, it's good. it it's basically just a bunch of depictions of hell and unparalleled torture. Godzilla but... in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's an actual comic, by the way. It's real good. Oh, really? That's real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> like legit, that's a thing that exists. Godzilla and Hell. It's a comic series. <laughs> but I love the feel as as much. Like I, I really enjoy the feel of how like Hell is depicted in media. As strange as that sounds. I thought you were Christian, Kona. <laughs> I don't. I don't enjoy that it is so as much as it is, but I like. I like the feel of it, admittedly. Yeah. Have you seen now like the Doom series interprets hell? Because that's so far my favorite interpretation. Mm, vaguely, I, I really mostly know. What basically, you told me. basically, it's like an interdimensional plane that is infinite and has like an infinite amount of demons in it. And they just kind of like absorb worlds and they then, then they convert the bodies into demons, the energy into like the souls into, I mean, they convert the bodies of the people into demons, they convert the souls of the people into energy and they add the world to their own realm and land, basically. Okay. And it looks really fucking <laughs> cool. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It does. That game looks... The designs of that game are wonderful. Yes. Love it. But what if what if we did something that maybe took the concept of spirits and souls like that, but wasn't so hellish? Like... What if hell wasn't hell? What if hell wasn't hell? It got <gasps> wrong? <laughs> Sexual? <laughs> Question mark? Exclamation mark? 
<laughs> red oh. circle, red arrow, top ten. Top t- top ten. You won't believe. <laughs> Number eight will blow your mind. <laughs> the results will blow. You, there, you won't believe the result. Okay, <laughs> but what if what if it was like this? This is an idea I kind of had. Okay simmering in my head a while ago but never actually wrote it wrote down That's what if habit. like <laughs> so when when spirits when when people die their soul kind of seeps into the earth and uh it basically if they have any regrets or unfinished business you know the drill their soul kind of seeps into the earth it stays on earth and why does this okay. remind me of like scrooge and the christmas carol a tiny bit I don't know. I don't know. Kind of could go for the same vibes. Yeah. Once it seeps into the earth, it uh, it makes its way to a kind of secret section down there and goes into the soil and ends up getting absorbed by this massive tree where, like, the souls are then re-sprouted onto this tree like fruit. And there's a whole society of people down there called the Spirit Keepers who keeps these, like, spirits, spirits. and souls uh, kind of organized and in check. Mm-hmm. Basically, the whole aesthetic would be, like, a lot of, like, yellow, pinks, and blues. And, mm, like, just cool. a very tranquil place. I like to think, like, kind of Greek and Roman architecture. Yeah. And I still think it's fun that... You're, like, very Christian, but you're still, like, influenced by a lot of things that aren't Christian, like Roman architecture, uh, Greek uh, philosophers, uh, African tribes. Yeah, I find that stuff just really cool. Because it is really fucking cool. (laughs) (laughs) It's so cool. It's cool. (laughs) Anyhow, continue. So I had a vague story planned out where, like, basically, okay, so these these spirits, when they come into contact with something, will mm-hmm. kind of inhabit it like a human body, and it'll be able to speak and everything through it. I, I think I have... How did, that, how did that work? I think it was, like... If you can't remember it, just re- just make up something. Yeah. Make something uh, up. Well, this is where we can come in. So how do you think this would work? Like a tree in a different, maybe plane of the world uh, where all spirits with regrets or anything go to. And it's uh, kind of kept up by a society of people, the spirit keepers. Are these spirit keepers, are they spirits or where did they come from? That I never figured that out. Like Brilliant. I said, I put, I put no thought about this. <laughs> doesn't need an explanation, honestly. No, but I think, um, like, it could also, it could be a high school story where they, like, go to a coping high school. Welcome to coping high school, everybody. No. <laughs> um, no, but I think it would be a very tranquil place. And maybe, maybe it was just work where it's, like, the most tranquil pay, place they could ever be. And you have to, like, find peace instead of revenge and there's like a whole bunch of different uh, maybe you have spirit keepers who keep the world but then you have spirit passers who help you pass to the to some kind of afterlife okay so like people who like i said they're basically therapists this is a therapy story it's <laughs> fairly similar to that like negative forest we thought up last time yeah people just talk to these spirit passers about their yeah maybe every time you like, like find a peace with yourself or maybe every time something someone just finds peace with themselves they just loop up to whatever afterlife they believe in or whatever hmm. i always like the fact i always like that idea of that you you pass on to the afterlife you believe in yeah like you pass the way you want to go anyhow but, knowing the world that might not be true but oh well <laughs> but i had this brief story idea where basically the spirit keepers were kind of died out or like they went at war with themselves and kind of killed themselves out whatever you want to say and why did they do that i don't know it was just a vague story idea in my brain and Mm -hmm. like a few of them escaped to earth and 
one of like the inheritance, a spirit keeper by birth, but has never really been to the place. His his grandpa kind of gives him like a. So old... are the spirit keepers humans? I think they'd be humanoid, but like vaguely different. Like something separates them, like pink eyes or something. Yeah. But basically, he ends up after his grandpa passes, who was a spirit keeper. Uh, his grandpa like gives him a map or whatever to get back to this world, and now he has to kind of figure out and piece together what was going on because it's completely abandoned has, at this point. And then he has to like restabilize it again. Possibly. That could be fun. That is a pretty fun concept. Don't love it as much as the others, though. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. But I don't know. I found it interesting. It is really interesting. That sounds super sarcastic and like, oh yeah, that's interesting, Coda. No, but <laughs> uh, no, but I, legit, that is really that is a really fun concept. Then again, negative fours we did last time. Mm-hmm. And I think how, there's not how, as... How dare you steal my ideas, Coda? We're going to have to talk about this after the episode. We can talk about this right now if you're man enough. Oh, yeah? Hit me. Hit, hit you? Yeah? Did you just punch your mic? I, I did just punch my mic, but my mic represented you. Yeah, but your mic's very expensive, and I don't like you breaking very expensive equipment we need for our friends. Coda. Yeah, but you're more expensive and more important to me, Cohen. No, you. I love you. You too. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a roller coaster. I love it. <laughs> oh my god! Look at that. The pi- your your current our current profile pictures made that better. I think <laughs> they did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Oh, Anyhow. the pigeon looks like the mic. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you don't know what we're referring to, just look at the thumbnail of the previous episode. That's called us profile picture right now. It is. Um, but Jay, I think at this point we should pick a concept. Okay. We've had half so, an hour. We need to pick one. Got it. Okay, so I I really enjoyed. The Spirit Keeper one, but I feel like there's not as mm-hmm. much fun design potential. I mean, there is, but we would have ones. to, like, draw it out. And it's, like, less tangible because, again, it's not, like, specifically based on anything. Most of the stuff we've come up with in these user principle called conceptual contrast, where you basically take one thing and combine it with another thing to create something interesting. That rhymed, you're yeah. welcome. But, uh, yeah, it's very vague, so it would be a lot harder to develop, especially in such a tor- short time span. But we could develop it sometime. If we, we want. Could. But I need to start if... a project at some point. Mm-hmm. But I I really like the air travel world that's like African tribal mm-hmm. stuff. Because it's just so much fun like Do we do we wanna potential. include dinosaurs? We could include di- we could find a way to include dinosaurs. Because it's like let let's say the asteroid never hit, you know? Yeah. Maybe it did hit, but instead of killing the dinosaurs, it somehow split the world apart. Oh, that's so cool! It makes sense. It makes if sense you don't if you think don't think about, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes so much sense if you just put absolutely no thought into it. Yeah. So if if you come in and give your scientific explanation of why it uh, won't work, religion. <laughs> this world has a god now. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Uh, how is this possible? Uh, Jesus. Jesus. Dennis from Jesus. <laughs> Shut up. Dennis from Jesus, you don't exist, you say? Oh, what proof do you have he didn't? Huh? Yep. Oh, uh, that's Punk? great. I, st- I still like to think dinosaurs had cat ears, but that's a, that's a talk <laughs> for a different day. No. That makes no morphological sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> like none. <laughs> Whatsoever. <laughs> it is a funny thought, though. It is. So, yeah, that's, that's, we could do that. Oh, you want to play the game real quick? One round where we just say one word each? Oh, yeah, we should do that real quick. You start us off, and then I'll start one off. Uh, Bikers. 
track. Ooh, I gotta think real good about this. Uh, water park. Because. Sports. Which jumps to my mind in that. Oh, so did I you think say we sports? Something. Yeah, I said sports. Okay. I think that could be fun because it, it could be like a world where like you have like uh, these gigantic like water tracks with all sorts of contraptions, maybe like game show style. Like Oh, uh, so like what if it's like just of... a very water based world? Oh, that could be cool. And you have these like advanced water bikes people race on. Yeah. But I, I like the idea better of this just being a gigantic arena. Because I've always loved uh, loved like super elaborate indoor swimming pools. Like, don't at me. I really love them, <laughs> especially when they they're have cool. like styling. And I've always like dug the aesthetic of just game shows because they're made to be appealing, and I like that. Uh -huh. um, but just combining those two into like a Formula One water sports thing that's like part Mario Kart, even I think that could be really fun. Yeah, and I think that could be really cool as well. And to expand on that in a different direction, my water world idea, and I think these are both super cool ideas. <laughs> I've been inspired by, like, I've played a few games. I, I'm not really a gamer. I don't play many games. But you're, you're not a you're not a gamer. I guess we'll I guess we'll have to fit. I guess we'll have to cancel Game Friends then, huh? <gasps> no. You said it was a good idea. We could do Let's Plays. We could get after them for new, but no, apparently no. not because you're no. not a gamer. I'm not huh? a gamer. <laughs> I'm gonna boot you up I am a gamer. Broadcast. I take it back. Prove that you are a gamer. I played. I I pre-ordered New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh... So, but game-wise, I, I haven't had the opportunity to be inspired by as many games as I have movies and TV shows. I love but, games. I consume the games. Yes. But I'm the game I've been most inspired by, like, every time I play this game, I just jump into the world. I'm like, yes. It's so cool. And that cool. game is Subnautica. How did you know? Bro, you play, like, free games and you mention a water-based one. <laughs> Of course, I'm gonna guess that's. Oh game. yeah, I have played like three games. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? Oh yeah, it's Slime Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I play Subnautica, I'm just like, yeah, so Subnautica's inspired. really good. It it's is real so good. So cool. And yeah. like, I think I think a world that's like primarily water, like Subnautica, would be really cool. And like, it would be but really if like cool. society has advanced to a point where there are lots of technologies that float on top and under there would sink th there should this water. be like some kind of land otherwise like uh this works for both ways because evolution would be impossible because you wouldn't have humans who like evolved to walk on land and creationism would be impossible because it was it would just be like god dumps them if, in a river and they drown basically <laughs> exactly so i think there is form of land but it's mostly water so like technology yeah. has adapted to where buildings float on top of water and everything and like maybe there's Hell a lot yeah. of submarine stuff maybe and, like, people have maybe just regular people have like more aquatic features yeah that could be cool like most people are kind maybe of, there's like, just fish people Ooh, but like I, I still want them to be able to walk on land so like it needs to make yeah, sense they're true. like they, Maybe just they, they need to be more like a quiet. And we'd have to decide do they humans. breathe in the water or do they breathe on land? I've, I I yeah. think it would be more fun if they breathe on land. What if they were like humans with like you know certain like eyes that were able to see underwater really well or like webbed fingers? Oh, they could have they could have webbed fingers and those like thingies alligators have where they have like the yeah, way they like the clear is. eyelid. Yeah, the clear eyelid. Yeah. Like some kind of protective skin in front of the eyes that's like super smooth. So like, yeah, it could be basically humans, but just a couple modifications. Like we'll say they evolve differently to where they uh, have some more water Or were created differently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well... Because with, with evolution, it would just be like they come out of the water and they become more like human-like because that 
for some reason it gives ad- an adaptation apparently maybe on the land there's just more food or whatever but like we shed most of our like fish ancestry in favor of monkey but in this world that wouldn't necessarily be necessary you know either way it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense but we don't need to think about that right now because like if the world's mostly ocean anyway why would we evolve to be on land you know one thing we could think about is that uh when fish evolved into monkey uh and shed its fish features in our world that wouldn't be necessary it would be favorable to keep those fish features right fish so monkey that's why they'd have the fish features the webbed feet the fish monkey fish monkey fish monkey i, I think it would be a really cool creature designs to where everything is geared towards being aquatic everything is aquatic everything is cool when you're wet <laughs> everything is cool when you're wet <laughs> <laughs> everything is wet when you're in everything a planet that's 90 percent ocean Honestly, isn't it crazy to think that our planet is already, like, 70% ocean? I know. So weird. So weird. What if we made, like, 95% ocean? Yeah, I think that'd be fun. All the but, blood. Oh, we gotta, we gotta pick a world. So, oh, yeah. What are we picking? Um. 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 Pizza? No. <laughs> <laughs> about that we could go with the pizza one no uh pizza ones i i think i like the like i think the indoor like uh water racing we don't have too much to work with that but i I, feel like that would be an attraction in this water world that could work yeah i still think it'd be fun but yeah i prefer Probably the African Dino World with maybe the Floating Islands or the Supernatural one. But we already did something Supernatural. Yeah, let's, go, like with, last let's go with the Dino World. Yeah, let's go with the Dinos. Dinos. So, so like, African Dino Koda, World with Koda, maybe have you, Floating Have you seen how cool like prehistoric mammals are? They're so cool. Have you seen that giant sloth? Yes. Oh, it's it, so cool. There's so many cool ones. They're so cool. I love all of them. I need to do more research into those and add them to my visual library. Me too. But anyhow. Prehistoric animals are just really awesome. Animals are cool. Yeah. Animals, animals are, nice. are cool. Animals are nice. I'm drawing giraffes right now. Are you? Yeah. I am not drawing anything at the moment. I should be That's drawing fine. something. I just, I just tend to draw during the podcast, like not because I needed to concentrate but because i get very obnoxious when i don't do it uh, <laughs> uh or at least i don't like the way i act when i don't do it anyhow and i do enjoy the productivity but anyhow that's personal stuff you guys don't need to know about that um <laughs> that's yay not Wh- which one which ones do you prefer i enjoyed the water world but i feel like i'm not gonna have as much fun with it as i would like a tri- african tribal world yeah so, so do like, we do we just want to do uh african tribal world Bolt. yeah let's let's take a world and base it off like tribal aesthetic we could do the floating islands that could be fun but yeah i don't i don't could they necessarily reside? right now i don't see a big reason for it mm-hmm. if we could incorporate the thing about the meteor having hit maybe instead of floating islands there's these gigantic craters with like magma flowing in between them that are like super wide and you have to cross those to like meet up with other tribes and maybe some specific tribes have like specific lifestyles like maybe some are fishers maybe some are uh woodsmiths and maybe the story or whatever could take place of some of like a big uh basically troop of uh salesman people or like trade people who just walk around with this gigantic carriage of like big dinosaurs uh passing the wasteland and all the cool stuff that lies in it passing these gigantic holes or like cracks in the crust of the earth to trade and survive Mm -hmm. that's my sales pitch 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Buy it. Now. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, what if... What if Coda stops talking? <laughs> I'm trying to think, sorry. <laughs> You're not allowed to think. You need to think out loud. We're on a podcast, uh, my dude. They can't, they can't see you think. I'm, I'm sorry. My good chap, my they apologies. cannot see you think. My apologies. Good. But... Hmm. What if, like... I don't, uh, we could, uh, I want there to be something kind of very interesting about this world, almost. almost I like the little... Cracked Planet idea. I Personally. like the Cracked Planet idea as well. Let's, so what are some other things that could happen if an asteroid hits that, sh that does a lot to the Earth? Lots of species would die. Volcanic uh, stuff would get much more active. Uh, presumably, maybe, like, continents would shift apart and that's a reason why the that's a reason why there's cracks in the planet and maybe there's like a lot more like uh uh volcanoes underwater just so islands would form or start to form so we might see some small islands depending on the time frame we want to set this in uh we could see i don't know what would happen to the tides necessarily i i know that like on the opposite side of the planet where the meteor hits, like instead of the plates um, uh, going out of each other, they like bump into each other and form mountains. So the other side of the planet would be very mountainous, I guess. But we're basing this in Africa and that's presumably where we want to make our meteor hit because that's where we want the cracks to be. Okay. So I just that's had an idea. Right, what off if... the, right off the top of my head. Yeah. What if, okay, so this meteor hits, and this would be very grounded in the idea of evolution. The meteor hits, and, like, people, because, like, perhaps there's so much volcanic ash in one section, it's unsafe to go on land, so people are forced to reside, I mean, creatures are forced to reside in the water for longer than they naturally would, or creatures are forced to go up top to mountains or whatever. And You want to go back to the water idea? Well, no, 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 listen. So... There are, because people were forced to go to different sections of the world and remain separate for so long, they kind of evolved differently. And so now you have different variations of humans in different tribes. That would be very fast. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I haven't can... seen you in 50 years. We have webbed feet now. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but we could say, like, it took, you know, however million years, billion years. Yeah, that could be cool, depending on how much we want to change them. Like, there's a difference between, like, oh, we have slightly longer legs and we have fish heads. Yeah, that's. I, it's not going to be, like, fish heads. It's going to be, like, we have webbed fingers and... We are long. We are tall. Yeah, we are mighty. exactly. We, have we are ball. tall. We have fish heads. We have uh, very thick skulls. We, ha You know, so yeah. stuff like that. Thick skulls make sense. But yeah, would mm -hmm. they would they like interact with different dinosaurs as well? Maybe yeah, you could have think... this like a uh, tribe of basically elves with like really tall like basketball uh, player level people who like have all sorts of like sauropods with them, the long neck boys. Uh huh. Or maybe it's That'd the opposite really where they're they're really short, but they have because sauropods. the sauropods did all the tall things for them. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe I don't know. Would they evolve to be longer or shorter? They have sore I, don't, I don't know. They would be. It would be advantageous for them to be long because then they could feed the sauropods or whatever. I don't know. I'd need but to they look into They that. wouldn't have to reach up and grab trees and fruits because all the sauropods would do it for them. That's true. Honestly, the sauropods would eat it for themselves. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it could be fun to like. Maybe the world finally settles down a little bit, and like the all the volcanic ash settles, and the volcanoes yeah. stop erupting, and maybe. Do we continents... still want to? Do we still want to keep the cracks in the earth? Or... Yeah, the cracks can be there. But like once we the world this, uh, settles down want. from this giant asteroid, people mm -hmm. start seeing each other and they're like, oh, you're not like me. <laughs> yeah. We could do some social commentary stuff about racism. No. Uh, more like, <laughs> more like 
we could explore the idea of just different uh, people in general, like uh, Neanderthals or European humans meeting African humans. Yeah, exactly. Not slave trade, but no, <laughs> that's not what we want to do. Exactly. We but I think dinosaurs. I think having a bunch of tribes of slightly different variants of humans is a really fun idea. That is a really fun idea with different dinosaurs and like prehistoric species that make no sense. This is going to be fantasy dinosaurs. Yes. For all the, all the paleo artists are knocking at that door because we are de- <laughs> we definitely have enough clout to alarm every single paleo artist if we talk about dinosaurs, right? That's yeah, they come knocking at our door and they're like, "This isn't how this works," and you're like, oh, "I I know it's fantasy." <laughs> <laughs> we we definitely need to worry about that. We have so much clout. We have like what five people like, leaving comments? Hell yeah. I love least, every single one dude. of the people who le- who leave comments. I, 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 for one, read every single one of them. I do, too. Coda responds to, five. Coda responds to every single one of them, but I read every single one of them and respond sometimes. Yay. But, let's see. So, what is there... I guess we would develop some different types of people and some different ways they interact. Yeah. We could have like, honestly, I love the just idea of like a bunch of like this African tribe riding on triceratops with like uh, all sorts of rings and maybe even like uh, bandages and like whatever else on their horns. And they have big ass spears with ribbons on them. I just love the love the idea of that. I do as well. Riding around on triceratops. Would make no sense because African people don't ride on rhinos or whatever, but hush. Hush. I think, and I love, whatchamacallit, I, I was looking into African clothing and there was this image of some, like... Uh, Dude riding a triceratops? <laughs> I wish. But That'd some cool. traditional African clothing. And basically he was... There were three guys, and they were all wearing really cool hats, but they were painted from, like, head to toe with white dots. Head to toe all... or head to toe? Head to toe. But My head to toe, they had white dots all over, and I thought it looked that so cool. That is really cool. cool. Oh, what about that with, like, oh, maybe, like, oh, that would fit so well with, like, an armored dinosaur, because when you look, like, you know those, like, prehistoric arm- armadillo-looking guys? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Imagine those. They would fit so well because they have like little bumps in their shell and maybe every single bump could be like accented with a white dot. Yeah, and it's like oh, and the people kind of do their makeup to mirror their steed. Yeah. That could be so cool. It could. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah! Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like there would be certain people who are better at certain trades. So like you know, people with who we, who have like longer arms i mean maybe there's like people who are like r- really good at climbing trees because their head their fingers got really long or something and so or really strong like if yeah, you look at monkeys it doesn't matter how long your fingers are the strength of the fingers is what matters right so like they got really strong fingers so they're really good at climbing up trees and getting left fruits so, like, they become the number one fruit salesman. Mm. That's interesting. They could work with, like, uh, uh, what, what, what prehistoric, like, animals eat fruits? I know. Maybe, oh, wait, the morphodons. Ha ha. Ha ha. They don't eat fruit. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Fantasy <laughs> that morphodons, they eat fruit. Do with them morphodons? I don't know. I'm not a paleo artist. Um, I have no idea. Anyhow, there could be like, like I said, like the waterbound people who are really good at hunting fish, so they're like the number mm-hmm. one fish salesman. Oh, they like... could have like mosasaurus crap, please. Yes, water, water dinos, water, water dinos. Oh, water dinos are so cool. Oh, wait, wait, they, they need to, they need to have like caprosuchus as, as dogs. Do you know what a caprosuchus is? I don't. They're ba- okay. Um, I need you to I need to send you one of these images but to just to just to like summarize it for you uh you know how cr- you know like crocodiles and stuff right 
Yes. And you know how they have really short legs? I do. Is it a croc with wrong le- long legs? It's a really... It's a nimble, long-legged crocodile. Oh, it's sin- sin picks. Oh, sin- Sensorus picks. It's not even a dinosaur, sadly, but... You know. It's probably less extreme than the picture I'm about to send, but it's fantasy. Shut up. Um... Just look at this one and enjoy it because I love this drawing. Also, what if it what if it had like it was suspended above the water, and like it had all these piers connecting, like Hawaiian Hawaiian settlements. How some Hawaiian settlements look, where they're like suspended a wall above the water, and there's a bunch of piers connecting the buildings. <clears throat> Whoa, long leg croc! That's long so leg cool. Croc. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> oh. Long leg croc. Long leg croc. Long leg croc. Long leg croc. <laughs> Lanky croc. Lanky, Lanky croc. croc. Lanky croc. No, but that could be seriously cool. Oh, what if the... What, oh, oh. I had the best idea in human history. What if the Triceratops tribes had African face masks that looked like the, the thingies uh, Triceratops has on their heads? The horns? No, not oh, the horns. Oh no, the the big rim. The big rim. The, the big the big shield rim the, thingy. Yeah, that could be so oh, cool. It could. And they have like spears and shit. <laughs> Imagine so cool. if that like they they wore like something fr- coming from their shoulders that looked like the rim that's behind their head. Oh, I like the mask idea personally a bit better, but that could also be really cool. If we could have both, we could do both. Mike. Yeah. Okay. So like. The the water idea with like all the piers, like you were saying, there could be piers, and since they're really efficient at swimming, I'm assuming there would be like de- designated like diving places. Yeah, swimming would be really dangerous. It would Cause, be like, cause like not only because they don't have like oxygen tanks or whatever, but also because like volcanic activity. Uh, <laughs> maybe they have like some sort of. Uh, vague technology that doesn't make sense that they can yeah. use to breathe or whatever. And I like to I I like to think that over time their lungs kind of got good at holding their breath. Yeah, that that works. Like people I know there what's the world record for holding your breath? Isn't that like fifteen minutes? It's like sixteen underwater? minutes or something oh, dang. like that. I think we could extend that to like half an hour or something. Mm-hmm. Over millions of years speaking. You know? Yeah. Like, they wouldn't fully develop gills, but they would definitely have a larger lung capacity. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We could base it off, like, frogs. Wrong. Or, like, dolphins. Dolphins have, like, the long lungs. Yeah, they do. I know, also, what are, what's, what was, like, another mammal that could hold his breath for really long? Don't remember. Whales? I mean, uh, like, all aquatic mammals like that can hold yeah, their breath that's for true. a really long time. Like, a couple of hours, at least. That's interesting. And they could like ride. Uh, imagine just, imagine just a straight up uh, African cool looking dude who has like this sleek outfit that's as aerodynamic as possible, and he has this like he he's either bald or he has his hair like combed back, and he has these aquatic features and his big ass ribcage to house his powerful lungs. And he just jumps on a Mosasaurus and they just dive down. Actually, that doesn't make sense because the Mosasaurus was more of a surface, like a, <laughs> a, sh- a shore animal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it sounds cool. So it was cool. It's fantasy. It works. It's fantasy. It works. That's our excuse every time. What would like a tribe that resided to the mountains for millions of years look like? Okay, that, I had an idea about that. It's a really... It's a really steep mountain. Yeah, it's really steep. Uh-huh. And they build, like, uh, things on the side. And they have, like, uh, pterosaurs as their dinosaurs. Okay. We could combine that with the fruit eaters to have, like, dimorphodons. Maybe atop of the mountains grow delicious fruits. I don't know. Yeah, I think they would be, like, really short to help with balance. Yeah, they would be really short. And that would help also with, like, riding on pterosaurs if they have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know too many pterosaurs, but I do imagine one being able to at least hold one person, especially if they're short, which is uh, Quetzalcoatlus, which is the giraffe-sized pterosaur. 
It's real uh. big. It's really big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still just obsessed with long leg croc. Long leg croc is great. Imagine just they, they they would be perfect for like swamp territory. They really would. Oh, imagine like a bunch of African tribe people covered in like mud and stuff riding these riding these dudes being like a whole camo squad. Imagine those just I know. Oh my god. We we came up with the best idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, I love how these I'm so, so inspired to draw some of this. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we need to do this sometime. I need to do some studies of, like, dinosaurs and stuff. Dinosaur morphology. The thing is, I don't even, like, believe in evolution, but it's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's just too much cool stuff in the world. Even the, one, even the stuff you don't believe in, it's cool. Like, I know. I don't believe in God, but God's cool. I like God. God is cool. Like, yeah. the, like, the... the like you agree, the Bible's really cool, even though you the don't think Bible it's real. The Bible is really cool. It's got some great story. What was that story about, again about like the children and the bear, or whatever? Oh, uh, basically, two divine she bears mold six forty children. I don't think that was quite the one I refer I was referring to, but that's also pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it does feature one of my favorite stories, which is Tower of Babel. I like Tower of Babel because it shows the Babel. importance of. Not being an asshole. And communication. I wanted to mention communication, but then I realized that could also be funny. <laughs> I feel like the mountains, their architecture, because they wouldn't have maybe as much room on a cliffside to spread out, it would be very tall and thin buildings. Yeah. And that could so work, like... because they have, like, flying stuff, and they're really short. Exactly. And they don't need, like, big houses, because, again, they're really short. <laughs> <laughs> they're like halflings better but i feel like they would have better like not specifically like low light or dark vision but more like far eyesight uh-huh yeah because they look down from a mountain a lot yeah but i do also like this idea of like aren't there like at least in madagascar like really tall trees and stuff i think so with like sauropods. By the way, we're grabbing dinosaurs from every single continent and cramming them into Africa, basically. <laughs> it's fantasy! <laughs> it's fantasy! <laughs> it doesn't need to make sense if it's fantasy. That's how it works. That's how it works. Fantasy is the best excuse. Creativity. Now, yes. but th this is a really fun world. <laughs> I love this so much. We need to draw some of this. You could design like, like the people, just... and I could design like, oh, that could be a really fun, just small project we could do, where you design like the people, Different and I design like, with, like oh, I design yeah. some of the creatures, and architecture, and environments. And we do stuff and together. Exactly, and I feel like they would be heavily based, like the people's attire and their uh, could be based way on dinosaurs. Life. Could yes. be based on dinosaurs. Yes. So, like, the creatures which they reside with heavily inform their clothing. Maybe, maybe, you know the, you know the, like, um, the, again, armadillo-like dudes? What if, like, the high-status ones wear, like, armadillo, those armadillo shells as, like, their royal back Ex Like, basically. shoulder pads and, like, armor. They are way too big for shoulder pads. Uh... <laughs> They well, like, they cut them like... down and everything, I'd say. Yeah, that... yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And they would, like, respect it being dead. Not like, we killed it. Yeah. We did good. Yeah. What would they eat? Would they eat just, like, wild boars? Maybe. I feel like a lot of people, or a lot of these tribes would end up worshipping certain dinosaurs in a way. Yeah, maybe, maybe like, they worship gods that were, at some point, like, overgrown dinosaurs that were really strong. Maybe oh, they... yeah. And they think that all the dinosaurs of that species are kind of like... Descendants like, of it. Holy descendants of that, yeah. Yeah. It's like... It's like there was once this like really big... Uh, I don't know. This like absurdly big sauropod that was like 80 meters tall. And they worshipped it and fed it. Maybe it, w it had like gigantism and wasn't able to walk and it just sat in one place for a while. <laughs> and the people kind of found it, and they were like, we need to worship this god, and ever since then, the sauropods live with them. That's a really cool origin story. I think that's so cool. And that's where their tall gene comes from, because the taller you were, the less energy 
the god would have to expend to eat. Mm -hmm. We just came up with an origin story. Origin story. Origin story. Everybody loves it. It's an origin story. But this is really I, cool. I personally adore this world concept. This is cool. <laughs> you still haven't watched Primal. You need to watch Primal to inform your fantasy dinosaur decisions. Is Primal similar to this world? Not specifically, but it does feature a lot of like fantasy dinosaurs, and I love it. Okay. And a lot of just mishmashing of a whole bunch of historical concepts. You mm -hmm. need to watch it. I will. Let's see. What would they eat? Maybe like, uh, really big. The herbivores would probably have a more like vegetation diet, but they probably would still eat like small oh, boars or whatever. I like. Okay, so let's say like. Uh, because, like, you know, we just said one of them worshipped the dinosaurs close to them, so they probably... Oh, what if they, like, like those dinosaurs did. took the diets of those dinosaurs? Oh, we could have exactly. a we could have a carnivore tribe. Exactly. I was gonna say, we have a carnivore tribe, and they have oh. developed, like, really sharp teeth. Hell yeah. And, like, claws? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I and, don't like, actually really fast too because they hunt so like they have like really long fast legs or at least or at least fast reflexes they would probably hunt alongside their uh their uh theropod counterparts they could they could run with like raptors or maybe even just, just dilophosaurus that... or allosaurus or... imagine that scene though like a cinematic yeah. shot of like a human hunting without a weapon like an animal and just running alongside these dinosaurs with claws and teeth and eventually it just would probably slashes have into one's neck. It would probably have a spear or something like Maybe. that. Because otherwise it yeah. just wouldn't have a fair advantage. Um... <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. These, these people would have been developed to have a but bit yeah, more of a I'm, fair advantage. I'm, I'm actually that's thinking, what would make this shot so cool. I'm actually thinking if it's cool, if it or if it's possible to have like nails evolve into claws because claws work a tiny bit different from nails. Over time, the nails shed and the bones protrude. Yeah, or it just fuses into this claw. That could be cool. Carnivores, carnivores. <laughs> <laughs> they could have, like, what if they had, like, gigantic barbecues? <laughs> Honestly, oh, so it's a, it, it might sound like a joke, but they just make, like, they just have this, like, gigantic square or circle, and they just roast a bunch of stuff on it. And it's just yeah, a big barbecue. it's like it's it's like metal, or I guess it wouldn't be metal. What would they use? Stone, stone. Uh, oh yeah, kind it could of be stone. in a waffle like you know pattern and grid pattern. It could just be. It the... couldn't. It should. It doesn't even have to be a grid. It could just be like heated plates of stone. Yeah, like underneath is a roaring fire, and like you yeah. can pick up the stone and throw. And as we all know, it. fantasy dinosaurs in fact breathe fire, so that's really handy. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that could be. It's really not cool. a dragon. It's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. Look, it doesn't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> that one does. Yeah, but it doesn't breathe fire. <laughs> They're like that one's just a Drake. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Caprasuchus, more like Drake. God. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's like me being like Cohen Calmer, more like Coda. <laughs> <laughs> No difference. Uh, comparing cones and codas, it's like it's like comparing sh to uh, sh to toilets. <laughs> I don't that's, get it. That's the worst analogy I've ever made. I don't get it, <laughs> it at makes all. Makes no sense. <laughs> no one will ever get it. I was I was trying to self-deprecate. Instead, I made a toilet joke. <laughs> Anyhow, are wait? Are you saying you? No, I'm not. I'm not gonna elaborate on that. Don't, don't elaborate on my bad analogies. Anyhow, let's see. But I really like this idea of these different tribes with different dinosaurs, and they like base base their culture on the dinosaurs they worship. They base their culture and their. Diet. Little features based around and and uh, evolutionary features because they adapt yes. to the dinosaur lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But, like, I really, really like the scene of, like, a human going really, really fast behind this animal, like, much faster than humans we know today could. Yeah. Because I feel like that'd just be so fun to watch. You haven't watched Primal yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's basically exactly what happens in the show. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good show. It's a really good show. You need to watch it. I am hearing a dog. That is mine. Yeah. I forgot that you have a dog for like a while. Multiple dogs, really big ones. I have two of them, yes. Yes. The big dogs in the corner, as they say. Very. How big are they? <laughs> uh, One of them's like 200 pounds, I think. And the other one's like... Bro, that's 100 kilos. I can't do yeah. that. <laughs> that's really big. <laughs> it's really big. Anyhow. Is that why you're strong? Because you deadlift them? I mean, only on the weekends. Nice, dude. <laughs> nice. Mine's like 60 pounds. No. Well, it's not, not fully even grown that. yet. Not even it's that. It's not fully grown. It's like... A single it's still pound. a puppy. It's a puppy, and it bites. <laughs> oh, by the I'm way, so for happy. the listeners, I have a dog now. It's Cohen great. does. It's named Pepper. Pepper. It's a black dog. He's amazing. My parents are already sick of him, but <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine. He'll he'll chill out. He'll chill out eventually. Yeah, let's see. Do we want to bring anything else into this idea? Uh, what? how much technology do they have? I think very primitive technology because they didn't have to, like, innovate because they, like, again, they're, like, at a stalemate where they live comfortably uh, alongside these dinosaurs. So they're, like, right. at the tribal stage of development, but they've just had so much time that they've built these more complicated, like, structures somehow with architecture. If you say it doesn't yeah. make sense because these architectural techniques were impossible with the materials they used back then. Shut up, it's fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but like their architecture got ahead of their technology. Yeah, basically. Uh-huh. I love that concept. I like that as well because I think I, I enjoy drawing complicated or at least I enjoy looking at complicated buildings too much to not draw them. Yes. We need to we need to draw some stuff for this. We do. Yeah. We, like we drew very little things for our plant world, but we need to actually do quite quite a few designs for this because let's is just so make fun. A, let's just make a small project, Kona. We're small like project, just a little project. Just <laughs> would you like to call it here? I think we can call it here. I think we did an okay job. I think so too. I think this is Found definitely a... one of my favorite worlds that we've created. Maybe this. my favorite. This is definitely one of my favorites too. Uh, let's see, which one did we? We have Plant World, we have Spooky World, and we have this one. Look at how cool it I is. I think it goes like this. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I like Plant World more. Maybe I like this one more. Those two are kind of tied in my I know, eyes. I feel and like third Plant place. World. I feel like Plant World would be more interesting if we like drew out some of the concepts more and like developed it a bit more. But so far, I feel I've I I really like this one a bit more. Personally, mm-hmm. I might like the plant world the least, but that's maybe because I'm like least familiar with like that subject matter. Maybe but I do. I do really love the concept of this like worldwide thing. Me too. This like basically this world where humans got separated for a long time, so they evolved a little bit differently based on the dinosaurs they were surrounded with. Yeah, that was I was referring to, but yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Wait, what were you referring to? I was referring to the plant world, how it's like a worldwide war against plants. Oh, yeah. That I, I just think there could be so much cool weaponry. And so many yes. cool outfits made for that. It's like a costume designer's dream. I don't yes. know. I think we did a good job. These two worlds, the plant world and this world, are worlds that could pump out so much cool concept art. <laughs> yes. The spooky one, too. Don't forget spooky about spooky one, one too. It's 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 probably going to be the most g- generic concept art out of the three. Not if you approach it well. Yeah, I guess. And I'm not. I'm personally like. I it pro. It might not be like I've heard. I heard this saying before where, like, 
a concept might not be new to the world, but it might be new to you, you know? And I'm not that experienced with, like, 18th, 17th century architecture and, like, spooky stuff yet. Like, traditional spooky stuff. So, right. no, that could also be fun to explore. But I definitely want to work with this project on you, Santarkata. With you, Santarkata. Yes, but first, I want to work with you on it. First, this is my project. Because you have another project to finish. I do. I need to I need to get the ball rolling on my stuff before we get into this. Yeah. You you get your stuff finished, I'll work on this one so far in the meantime. I might just Lovely. turn this into my own project. It's mine now. It's mine. yours. You mine. have it. I stole it. Yes. It's mine. Just like all good ideas. I stole every single idea I've ever had. <laughs> but anyways. You want to do an outro? It's your turn to do the outro, Coda. It's my turn. Oh. Well. All right. The other artists Where... say their names. <laughs> we didn't do that this time of the intro. Dang it. <laughs> no. That's why we I said it. Everyone was <laughs> waiting for it. Us. We needed to say it at least once before the episode ends. No one expects us. You never expect the other artists say their you names. You don't expect us in general. You don't expect us. We have no a very inconsistent us. upload schedule. Is Not it Friday? Really. Is it Saturday? Is it Sunday? <laughs> Depends on how much crunch Coda has to do. Yes. But, whatchamacallit. Twas fun, Cohen. Yes. I love these world building episodes. They're real fun. We need to have Anyways. someone else on the world building episode sometime too. We do, because I think we both have our unique styles of world building but it would be yes. fun to get somebody else in here honestly we can do a lot with this this is just a fun exercise too and i want to develop this world <laughs> after, after one day who knows who knows one of us might end up pitching one of these to a to a company for a I game might just, or a movie i might or... just make this a personal like portfolio project that sounds pretty cool because it does get me like with like creature design environment design character design and world building world building all stuff Good illustration. Good oh yes, illustration. Because I might want to be an illustrator, you know. Yeah, I might too. Illustrating is so fun. Illustrating, illustrating. Me and the boys out here illustrating. illustrating. <laughs> I just I I need to make that. I need to make the me and the boys meme, but Photoshop like a bunch of illustrators' faces onto them and be like me and the boys illustrating. <laughs> Who would be, like, good illustrators for that? Uh, James Gurney, maybe. James Gurney's a great one. Uh, Marco Bucci's an illustrator. Yes. Let's see. Uh, Jake Parker's is an illustrator. Is he, uh, he's kind of... I guess so. I guess so. He is very famously an illustrator. Yeah, but he's super geared towards concept art compared to the other two. That's true. That's true. Will Terry... Lee White's? Uh-huh. There's a lot of good ones. Anyhow. But, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Well, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, wherever. Join the yeah. Discord. Links to See all ya. this in the description. All right. See y'all later. Oh, Will Will Smith. Smith Will Smith. Oh, whoa. Yes, Will Smith Will Smith Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith Will Smith Smith Will Smith. <laughs> we sound like Smurfs. Uh, <laughs> we, we sound like Dr. Seuss. Honestly, that's right, yeah.